We've just had a fork in Electronium and I've got a few people asking me exactly what that means and whether it means there are multiple versions of Electronium anymore. Uh, and there is still only one Electronium as there always will be. Now, let me explain what a fork is and why we did it. The concept of a fork is you've got lots and lots of distributed people called node owners. These are perhaps miners, perhaps pool owners, perhaps the exchanges are running nodes. These are the people who are running the ledger for cryptocurrency. It all sounds a bit complicated, but basically they all have to run a piece of software that's the same. And when we fork, that means that we're making a change to the fundamental blockchain, but we need everyone to update their software at once. And if they don't all update their software, then there's this potential to go into multiple coins like you've seen in Bitcoin or Ethereum. But because we've got a good relationship with all the pool owners, with all the exchanges, we have a great social media presence, we've got a great relationship with everybody really that's into Electronium, that means that everybody updated their software as expected and we did a fork that actually means that Electronium just had an update. So there is no two versions, it's just Electronium has been updated to something new. So the Electronium fork took place on May the 30th, but uh, it took a, a few days to, to actually stabilize, which I'll explain shortly. We carried out the fork. Uh, it was a really important fork for Electronium. And, and let's say update instead of fork because a fork sort of scares people a little. But it was a really big update for Electronium because we forked originally from a, uh, from a currency called Monero, uh, which is a privacy coin. They've got some fantastic coders over there and they'd written this amazing uh, dynamic uh, algorithm for, for block size, which is, which is really why we were super keen on using their, their fundamental blockchain. But they're doing tons of stuff with privacy that we didn't really want in our coin. So by taking that privacy stuff out, that's enabled us to do uh, a few things. One, we've got a much faster, leaner blockchain. We can get more transactions per block. Our block size is slightly bigger, so we can get more, uh, well, a default block size, so we can get more transactions in a block. So we're much faster, which is good for, for mass adoption. And the other thing, by removing some of the privacy focus stuff, it's enabling our regulation push, which is what's going on at the moment in Gibraltar, Japan, uh, and London, of course. Uh, we are we are pushing towards being a regulated cryptocurrency and not having those privacy features is important to us uh, as uh, they are uh, being frowned upon in, in some jurisdictions. There was a little bit of... Uh, of speed is of the essence or the feeling of that before this fork. Uh, we were running a, a code base before Christmas that uh, had never had something called an ASIC uh, mining it. Uh, these things are very, very powerful computers that mine specific um, algorithms. And somebody has brought out this piece of hardware that enables people to mine our coin faster than perhaps we wanted them to. So we went anti-ASIC. So it was a little bit of speed was of the essence. So we, we only had really a month to, uh, to get this out there into the community and test it. But we did test it vigorously. Uh, we tested it loads and loads. We had an outside um, agency test it. We had all sorts of people testing it and we gave it to the community for four weeks for testing as well. So it was well tested before it went live. Okay, so what happened during the fork was once everybody had updated their software, we got to the fork block, and then we encountered a problem. Even though we tested really, really thoroughly, the software was perfect. It worked exactly as we had planned it to work, but on all of our test nets, we had not got vast numbers of these ASIC miners mining. We had a handful of ASICs in the office. The difficulty uh, in the real world of the algorithm was much, much, much higher than it was on our test net, and nobody had really equated this and said, you know what, we need, to, we need to account for this. Unfortunately, the community didn't spot it, we didn't spot it, our external agency didn't spot it, nobody spotted it. And what it actually meant is on the first day of the fork, we weren't mining blocks at the right speed. Now what we did is we went off 
and we rented hashing power. So we went out to Nice Hash and to Mining Rig Rentals and some other places and we rented hashing power and we threw that at our own network to get these blocks in. And initially we mined them empty. You don't really need to understand all of the complexities of that, but effectively what we did is we mined them at the fastest possible speed to get this difficulty algorithm down. It took us a few days to get through it. It was a pretty ugly time, usual uh, lack of sleep for the team, but we got through it uh, and, uh, and everything went well eventually. So now it's all working, it's all live, everything is working exactly as we planned it to do. It took a few more days than we expected, but it's working very, very smoothly now. So we were having some blockchain flooding uh, before the fork, and they have tried that a few times since. We've seen huge volumes of transactions, flood transactions arrive on the blockchain, and they just go through super smooth. So that bit has been solved. Uh, the number of transactions that we can handle now is fantastic. We've, the great thing about the people flooding it is it's actually given us a real world test. They've been unable to, to get the volumes required to, to, to cause any problems at all. So it's been a really successful fork or really successful update as I'd prefer to say. The blockchain is now in the place that we need it for regulatory purposes, so we can move forwards with some of the places we want to. I know India has been speaking about uh, uh, privacy coins, Japan's been speaking about privacy coins, and uh, I dare say as we move forwards into regulatory environment within Europe, we're also going to have the same thing. So we, we don't need to face that fear anymore. We are, uh, we're not a privacy coin anymore. And we are now ready for that mass market that we predict is coming. We've already got 1.7 million users. And we haven't even launched fully yet. Remember, we don't really launch all of our features, all the API features, etc., until into September. So it's super exciting. The blockchain is doing exactly what we want it to do for when we get into these really high numbers. And when I say really high numbers, I'm not talking crypto high numbers like 300,000. I'm talking 20 million, 30 million, 40 million, hundreds of millions of people. We're really, really excited here.